Okay, Costa Rica is amazing. It is a beautiful little country. It's tiny. It's like the third of the size of Utah, yet it takes three times as long to get anywhere. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I had bus rides from my areas to get into San Jose that would take five or six hours, like just horrendous. And it would probably, is about the same distance of going, I don't know, maybe Salt, like Logan to Salt Lake, like about that same amount of distance, but because of the infrastructure, like the highway systems and the roads they have, it just takes forever to get anywhere um, distance wise. Uh, within the cities, uh, if you're in the big city, you'll take buses everywhere. Um, it is just a walking mission, so no bikes. And so yeah, you just walk everywhere. If there's public transportation offered, you'll take that as well. Um, sometimes if you're in a hurry, you gotta get to an appointment or somewhere and you're on the other side of your area, sometimes you might take a taxi. Um, but yeah, usually it's just we walk everywhere or um, take the, the buses. And um, Costa Rica is really interesting too. So as I had said before, it's a really small country, but in that small country, there's a whole bunch of different climate. So it's like they usually just have like summer and rainy season. Like that's all they have. Um, and when it rains, it rains like none other. It's so crazy. Like I got, I can't even tell you how many times I got soaked. <laughs> um, and my umbrellas broke. Like I had to buy, I don't know, maybe five or six umbrellas on my mission just because it rained so much and it was windy and my umbrellas were breaking all the time. Uh, but I wouldn't trade those memories for anything. Like as frustrating as it was, it was just like made my mission so much fun, more fun. Um, there's parts of Costa Rica that are really hot and dry, um, like in Guanacaste. So that's like in the East Mission or the West Mission now. Um, and then there's areas in San Jose that are colder, like Cartago is really cold. Um, that pertains to the East Mission. And then there's areas where it's just like mild climate, a little bit of humidity, and then there's other places that are just hot and humid and miserable. So you really get a little bit of everything in one tiny country. Um, and then there's really cool animals. Um, depending on where you're at in the country, uh, you may see a sloth, which is really hard to come by. Um, there's beautiful birds. Um, crocodiles, iguanas. I mean, these, there's, there's a lot of exotic animals. It just really depends on where you're at as to whether you're gonna see them or not. Um, I didn't see a whole lot of cool creatures or animals while I was there on my mission, uh, just because I wasn't in areas where those were relevant. Uh, I did get a chance to go back this summer to visit and I saw a lot of cool things. Um, and then food is good it's not spicy which sometimes i disliked because i love spicy food and a lot of their food is just very um just like natural flavors they don't add a lot of spice to their things um but you will eat rice and beans every day <laughs> and they have something that's called pinto which is like their own version of a mixed rice and beans um, and they eat lots of salsa lisano, which is also really good. They put that into their pinto. Um, and natilla. Natilla is huge. It's like a staple for them. It's like their version of sour cream. And um, basically, you'll eat just a lot of uh, what's called casadas. And it's just a plate of like their rice and beans or pinto, um, fried plantains, platanos, and then like some sort of meat, usually like chicken or pork, and then like a little side salad. And their salads consist of tomato and cucumber or um, cabbage. <laughs> and everything has um, lime and salt on it. Everything, all the time. Uh, another great thing is they always make fresh juices uh, out of the fruit there, which is so great. I loved it and I, that's something I miss immensely about Costa Rica is having fresh juice every day. Um, the tropical fruits down there are amazing. I had mentioned pinto, that's a huge food. They will eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like that is the food you will eat for your time in Costa Rica. Um, 
They also make a really great meal. This is something that's typical of Costa Rica. They don't have a ton of typical meals, um, but something that is typical of there is something called chifrijo, which is rice, white rice, and then either black or pinto beans. Um, but it's a little bit more soupy. They leave the liquid in it. And then they top it with um, chicharrón, which is fried pork skin, and avocado and pico, and you eat it with tortilla chips. And that was like my most favorite meal in Costa Rica. I loved it so much. Um, another thing is, um, so they have their, their version of convenience stores um, are called pulperias, and they're on every corner. Like, you will walk by 700 pulperias a day. Like, <laughs> we would stop at a pulperia, like, once or twice a day throughout in between our visits because we were hungry. We wanted a snack. And so we would grab, like, plantain chips or little candies or something. Um, everything's really cheap. And so, yeah, pulperias are everywhere. Someone one would be very familiar with that. Um, and, yeah, I ate plantain chips all the time, too. My most favorite were the plantain chips with... Um, Limon y sal, uh, lime and salt fla like flavoring on it. And I eat those probably almost every day. <laughs> Costa Rica also is pretty good about the type of food they eat. So they don't typically eat really strange foods like a lot of other Latin countries do. However, there was one time I ate pig's feet. Actually, I ate it twice. In my first area, there was a lady who made it a lot and uh, it wasn't my most favorite thing to eat, but <laughs> it was okay. I, I ate it to be nice, and it just was an interesting texture, and it's just, it's just the pig's foot. Like, <laughs> you just eat the meat right off the bone. Um, there were people, too, I had heard that would uh, sometimes eat chicken feet. That freaks me out a little bit, but they would eat it. Um, they also eat... They know the missionaries weren't allowed to eat this because it was sometimes it would make people sick. Um, but they eat sopa de mondongo, which is made out of like, I think it was, I think it was cow brains or cow something. I can't remember. Something from the cow. But missionaries weren't allowed to eat it. So, <laughs> um, what else? Mosquito bites. I got them all the time. Um, so insect repellent is a very wise thing to have. So housing in Costa Rica is actually pretty nice. Um, it depends on where you're at. I remember my first area, uh, we stayed in, in kind of a dinky house. It was really dusty and there were cockroaches everywhere. <laughs> um, but that's just kind of common anywhere you go, any part, of, even if you live in a really nice house, like cockroaches are just bound to get into your homes. Um, but they really make sure, they take good care of your, the missionaries. They make sure that you live in a safe area and a safe home. Um, basically everywhere you live is gated. Like anyone, anyone in Costa Rica, all of their houses have what's called a portón or like a gate. Um, and actually, so speaking of that, um, most houses don't have doorbells. So you either go to the door and knock but something that's actually more common and more like culturally acceptable for them is you yell out upe. So there's like different rumors about where upe came from, but I think the most common that I heard was that upe was the La like the Costa Ricans um, trying to say open in English. And so upe, you yell out upe like upe buenas and you yell that at someone's door instead of knocking so that they know that someone's there and then they come open the door. Um, so that was like something to have to get used to. And then it was hard coming home and not saying that when I go to someone's house. Well, actually, so it's really hard for a lot of people to get work in Costa Rica. Um, I came across a lot of investigators and members that didn't have work or they were working jobs that didn't pay very much. So Costa Rica is an actually pretty expensive country. It's the most expensive in all of Central America. And it's okay for like Americans because we, we have more money or we make more money than what they do. So 
rent for a home, like an entire house, is probably the equivalent of, you know, three or four hundred dollars rent for an entire house. And for us, that's really cheap. But for them, um, they don't make very much money. And so food is about the same price as what we pay here or sometimes more expensive. Um, but they make less money than we do. So it's really an interesting dynamic to see that, um, you know, they're working jobs that we have here in the States, but they make way less money than we do. I remember there's a surge, uh, one of my member friends from my second area, he's a surgeon. Like he, well, he assists with animal surgery, which something here would be like, you would make a really good amount of money, but for him, he like makes barely just enough to provide for his family. So it's interesting to see that living, like housing and food and work dynamic there. Um, yeah, but, but then there's a lot of people who come from Nicaragua to co live in Costa Rica and work because they, Nicaragua is even more in of like a, a work crisis than Costa Rica is. So there's a lot of them who come. And so going into Costa Rica, more likely than not, especially in um, San Jose and everything up, somewhere in the West Mission, um, there's a lot of people who are from Nicaragua that um, are there trying to work. And then in the East Mission, there's a lot of indigenous people um, because they come from Panama. Um, and right on that border is where there's a lot of indigenous tribes. And so there's a lot of people who are there. Um, and the main source of work for them is picking coffee beans. Um, it's a really tedious job, but it's something that they can do because a lot of them are not literate in Spanish or they speak very little. And so that's, you know, the only work that they can do. Um, so they are like working in the fields or getting coffee beans. Coffee is a huge thing in Costa Rica, like huge. Um, so a lot of times you, investigators would offer us coffee. And we're like, no, like it's okay. And they're like, why? Like you don't want coffee? Like we're known for coffee. Oh yeah, so Costa Rica is a pretty safe country, um, safer than most in Central America. There, I mean, you do have to have precaution. There are, you know, some dangerous parts, but um, generally speaking, Costa Rica is very safe. Um, and places to go, things to do. Costa Rica is known for its beaches, which is really hard because as a missionary, you're not allowed to go there. Um, but there's a ton of other things that you can do with um, uh, permission from your president. So there's volcanoes, there's some like other national parks or hikes that are really beautiful that um, you can go on. Um, again, just depending on what part of Costa Rica you're in is what locals do. In San Jose, there's more um, like museums and um, like little theme parks for kids. And then as you get further out into the other areas, there's more natural things you can go do. So go see the volcanoes or go on a hike, um, things like that. Um, but anywhere you go, there's, there's always something fun or something beautiful to go see.